Hey everybody, it's Todd with Sweet Tea Get Tires. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel and welcome to the shop. So you guys know where we are on the giveaway build. I got the body blank ready. I got the neck pocket routed. We got our template attached to the body with our alignment pins. I got those done in the last video. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna trace out the body shape on this top. We'll carry it over to the bandsaw, get the body shape cut out, then we'll route this body shape on the table router. That will get us to a point to where we can go back and start working on the neck. We'll talk about that when we get to that point. I wanted to show you guys something real quick that I, that I got. This is a number six four plane that I got off of Amazon. It is made by a company called Faithful. I paid 65 bucks for this plane shipped from the UK to South Carolina. This is a nice heavyweight ductile iron. Uh, the sides are perfectly at 90 degrees with the, with the sole. The sole's smooth, it's flat. I've checked it with a straight edge. It's got an adjustable frog so you can close or open the mouth. It's got a nice tool steel blade in it. All brass adjustment screws, um, nice brass screws that hold the totes. The totes are made from actual real wood. I've checked this, the chip breaker is flat with the front of the blade. So it's a, it's a nice plane for $65. It's a faithful number six four plane is what it's called. So if you guys will search for that on Amazon, you'll find one. But I tried for months to get a vintage Stanley on eBay. I placed a bunch of bids. I always lost. <laughs> um, it, they either ended at an inappropriate time or the price just got too outrageous. Some of the vintage hand planes, especially number six and number seven, if you can even find a number seven, those things can go for big money. They also have a number seven that's only a few dollars more. It's like 75 bucks. But a number seven plane is 22 inches long in most cases or around that measurement. That's a huge plane. And I just really felt like I'd get more use out of the six than I would a seven. Anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know where I got that thing, how much I paid for it, and where you can get one too if you want one. Moving right along. We're going to get this body shape traced out here. I am using a white Prismacolor pencil. I highly recommend a white or a yellow, even a silver. I've got some silver pencils too, like a welder's pencil. But I highly recommend that for working on dark woods. Just as a reference for me when I go to mount this template back on here, I'm going to go ahead and trace out where these pickups go. We're not going to mark out our string through ferrules or our bridge mounting holes yet. We'll do that once we're able to put the neck in the pocket so I can make sure I can check my alignment. We talked about that in the last video. All right, so I'm going to get set up here. I'm using old trusty on this thing. And let's get this body cut out. I'm excited. This is the way we do it. I stop every once in a while and just let that blade cool for a minute. And I'll leave the vacuum on so it pulls some cool air past that blade. So I got it all cut out and you'll see I've got the two handles attached for the Maximum Guitar Works template system. My alignment pins, they're holding this template on here nicely. I've got a three-quarter inch top and bottom bearing Unico router bit half inch shank in my router table right now. I like using that larger diameter bit when I'm taking this much material off of the edge of the body. This Unico bit, it is a three inch depth of cut two flute top and bottom bearing half inch shank. This is a monster of a bit. So I'm gonna put my mask on. We're gonna get this body shape routed out here.
All right, so that went pretty much like I expected it to. Knowing how this is cutting and going from that poplar to the canary, I'm gonna finish that off on the spindle sander. I just think it'll be safer right at that transition. The router's really wanting to jerk, so safety first, you guys. Um, that's one of the reasons why I really love these handles on these templates. There's our body blank. And I'm happy with this. Uh, I think this is going to be a beautiful guitar. I'm really, I'm really digging it. I've got the spindle sander set up, but I started thinking about this. And you know, we're, we're building custom guitars here. I want this guitar to leave my shop as a Sweet Tea original, not a direct copy of a Tele. And when you're template building, if you use the template for the full build, you're pretty much limited um, to what that template shape is. But when you have a spindle sander, you can change things just slightly that can turn that guitar in a, into a complete original. Here's what I'm gonna do. So the one thing I have never really appreciated about a Tele, and believe me, I've been a Fender player forever, but the one thing I have always thought that a Tele could use, I'm a firm believer of this in, all, in pretty much all guitar designs, unless they're like a double cutaway, um, that the horns are the same size, like on ES-335 or something like that. But if you look at some more modern guitars, most guitars these days contain forward momentum. It gives the guitar a more sleek look to the design. And I'm gonna shave some of this off right here, just to give this guitar a little bit off vertical. I'm not gonna mess with this lower bow down in here. Only right here, and only no more than like a quarter of an inch. Another thing I'm gonna do, and um, I've already said on the channel here many times, I don't wanna build duplicates of anything. And I know Tele guys do not like a forearm contour. We've talked about this. I kind of made a joke about it on the last video saying that the Tele guys would have a fit if I carved a forearm contour into this. I don't wanna do a forearm contour, um, full on forearm contour anyway. But what I am thinking, that area right there is just is thick. That's why they put a forearm contour on a lot of guitars, because it makes it more comfortable to hold. Now, I'm not gonna do a belly carve on this thing. We'll fade it starting about right here and no more than about 15, 20 millimeters wide at its widest point, right up in this area where your forearm crosses the plane of the front of the guitar and just make it more comfortable. So between that off vertical uh, cut that I'll do right here and that bevel, that's gonna turn this into an original Sweet Tea design. That's what I'm all about, you guys. You know, modifying existing designs, you can come up with some pretty creative things. This guitar's still gonna look like a Tele. I'm not going that far off label here. One more thing I'm gonna do, actually two more things, is in order to make sure that everything stays looking like it should and not like it's an afterthought, I'm gonna pull this area right here down into the body, only about three millimeters, not much. And I'll do that on both sides. It'll just tighten this up and make the guitar look a little bit sleeker. Another thing that's always a problem is this area right here where the player's hand goes to the neck. I'm already gonna ramp the back of this heel area under the neck pocket, um, just a little, just to make it a smooth transition from the neck up into the body. I won't do it on the front of this guitar, but I'm thinking about on the back here, just cutting a slight relief into the back. I'm basing this on what I know as a guitar player. It's, I'm not just trying to throw design aspects on this guitar so it's different. It's gonna look like a Tele. It may even smell like a Tele. <laughs> this is a Sweet Tea guitar. We'll come up with a name for it here shortly once it speaks to me and lets me know what it wants to be called. So I hope you guys are okay with that. I think once you see what I've got pictured in my mind, 
I really think you guys will love it. That's what we're gonna do. It's a free guitar after all. You know, you guys gotta let me play a little, you know? So let's pan down and I'll show you guys kind of with a pencil what I mean. Right here, I don't wanna cut too much off of this area. I just wanna slant this forward. And when I say slant it forward, I don't mean like a huge amount. Like that. Yeah, that's already going to do it just that little bit. And then over in here, <clears throat> I want to bring those in ever so slightly. I just mainly want this area right here at the point to come into the body just a little deeper. Like I said, I'm only talking three or four millimeters here, not much. I just want to kind of bring this in ever so slightly and then fade it right back into this original shape. And I think that's gonna um, really change the whole look of this guitar. So let's get over here to the spindle sander. Cheers, Scottish breakfast tea at 9 p.m. And it's delicious. All right, so let's just get after this. I'm gonna bring these two waist areas in a little bit and make sure we're go in the right direction. All right, you guys, so this is all I was talking about. We'll snap this template back on there and I'll show you guys what I mean. So you can see I'm not talking about much. That's all I'm gonna take off of it right there. And once I remembered, oh, I can snap the template back on there in perfect alignment, that gives me an opportunity to view exactly what I've done, subtle. Subtle difference. All I'm gonna to do to this body is get this perimeter sanded. Once I get that done, we won't go any further on it before I get the neck done, cause then that way we can snap the neck in the pocket and make sure that we are where we need to be. We're not gonna have that much sanding to do on the front. I'm trying to be really careful that I don't nick and gouge up the front at all. If we sand too much off the front of the body, that's gonna make our neck pocket a little bit more shallow and I don't want that. We're gonna take this back over to the spindle sander, work on these areas right here that I couldn't get with the big three inch drum and over in this area too in this cutaway, get those finalized. We'll work on this shape down here on the bottom and get that shape sanded out and get all that cleaned up and nice. And then we're gonna slot this fretboard in the interest of keeping my videos a little bit shorter, I don't wanna pack too much stuff into one video because what my goal here is on YouTube, and I've said this quite a few times, I wanna teach the guys who are just now getting into this or who I may be a little bit further into this than they are. I wanna teach those guys my method for building a guitar. Not only do I think that gives my channel more substance, and makes the videos worth watching. You know, you gain something from it. It's not just me filming myself building guitars. I don't really wanna do that anyway. I'd rather at least feel like I'm trying to help somebody. And hopefully my methods for teaching this to you guys might be a little bit more understandable than you could learn from someone else. Now, there are plenty of guys on YouTube building. There are plenty of guys who are great at it. I just wanna be a link in that chain. Plus, I've said many times that I want to give the knowledge that I gain away to you guys uh, so you can be as inspired as I am um, getting into guitar building. So I'm finding my way, you guys, you know, and I hope you're into it. I really do because I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. I love making videos. I love building guitars. I think you guys know that already. But anyway, let's get back to work on this guitar. So more vacuum, more sanding. That looks pretty dang good, you guys. Um, Tellys have a flat right there for the output jack. The electro socket's the one that goes inside the hole here. I have not decided if I'm gonna use that style output jack plate 
or if I'm going to use a football or a square style that mounts on the um, exterior. You can see it's got a flat right here. I'm going to leave that on there until we make that decision. There's no need in cutting that off and then because I'll have to put it back in if we decide to go with the traditional electro socket. I have, I've got both styles in the shop and um, we'll, we'll make that decision once we start looking at hardware and everything. I want to make absolutely certain that I've got a perfect flat side when we take this to put this in the fret slotting jig. So a couple of passes across the jointer should get us where we need to be. Alright, that cut nice and clean. I'm going to grab my straight edge. I don't think we can ask for any better than that. I don't see any light coming through that thing. Alright you guys, so what we've done is we've jointed one side of this fretboard. So I know this is my side. I'm still going to mark this so I know where it's at. And I'm just making a reference. We'll mark it on the front. My nut is going to be up here. I'm going to write an N. So that's going to be the orientation of the fretboard. Nut here, then we'll go up the neck like that. What I'm using, this is the Maximum Guitar Works 25 and a half inch scale fret slotting template. I'm using the LMI fret slotting jig and my new crown fret slotting saw. This saw has a 23 thousandths kerf. There is no set on the actual teeth of the saw. Perfect for fret slotting. I don't use glue to actually glue my frets in. I do use glue in the slot, but only to fill the void underneath the fret tang. This has got a nut line marked here, and then there's 24 fret slots on this template. The way this works is you slide this up inside this jig, and there's a pin. There's a little pin that sticks out down in that slot. You put it in the first position, that will be your nuts. You tighten these two screws down, that holds everything down nice and tight. You put your, slot, uh, your saw in these bearings and that makes sure everything stays perfectly perpendicular to the fretboard. So not only do you have a straight fret slot this way, you're not taking a chance on getting off this way when cutting frets by hand. So I've got this little checking area right here where there's a knot in this tiger wood, our Gonzalo Alves. I'm gonna put a piece of tape across this board so I can see down inside there when I go to cut these fret slots. That way I'll know not to make my cut for the nut line any further that way. I want to preserve as much of this streaking in this wood that I can. My fretboard needs to stop right here at the beginning of these indexing or these hardened steel drilling bushings that you use for indexing. I'm going to use an inch and a quarter masking tape. I just want to make sure that I've got my fretboard glued down here. So we'll burnish this down. That should be fine. I've got my super glue at the ready. I want to make certain that the piece of tape that I'm putting on the back of the fretboard is longer than the piece of tape that's on the fret slotting jig itself. That way I can make certain that I don't glue it to the jig. Same deal. We'll burnish it down. Don't want this moving on us. We will spread some super glue on the template. We don't need too much. Just enough to hold it. And then we'll spray the activator on the back of the fretboard. Just a little. And there we go. Perfect alignment on our fret slotting template. Slide this up in the jig to our nut line, which is right there. 
You make sure everything's pulled nice and tight. We'll start to tighten this down. You want it nice and tight. You don't have to torque it. You don't want to strip your screws out. But there we go. We're ready to cut our nut line. Put that down in the slot just like so. And we can always go back and manually uh, increase that depth by hand. All right, there's fret position one or fret one. Tighten it back down. Always make sure your fretboard's touching on both sides of your jig. Same thing. Just let your saw do your work. I just want to make sure that my fret slots are deep enough to allow me to start my radius and not lose my fret slots. And then once we get ready to glue this fretboard down, we can even wait till it's glued to the neck as long as we don't lose our fret slots. And that will give us a slot to guide the saw if we need to cut these a little deeper. Don't get carried away and forget that we're only doing 22 frets here. We're not doing 24 or 21. We're doing 22. All right, you guys, so there we go. 22 fret fretboard for the giveaway guitar. We're gonna do one more thing, and then we'll wrap this video up here. The neck pocket template that I actually used is a fit all. This neck is custom cut to go with that template. So this is the neck template we're gonna use. So here is our fretboard template right here, and I need to clean the paper off of this thing. We need to figure out where we want to put our center line. So I can put this fretboard all the way up on this end like this, or I can drop it down on this side like this. Whichever way we want to do it and get the most figure out of this thing. I will make the center line so the majority of the end of this black streak actually rides down the center line of the neck. Sometimes I like to only mark the 12th fret and use side dots to mark the frets. I just think that's a classy look. We'll decide that. We'll just mark a center line on this end. We'll measure over from our referenced edge to this mark. And let's find out what that measurement is. 35 millimeters. So I want to make a super fine mark at 35 millimeters. Let's come down here on the nut line and let's make a mark at 35 millimeters. So we'll get our 36 inch ruler and line these marks up just like so. And I'm going to take my 0.5 millimeter pencil this is a Graph Gear 500, not a 1000. There's our center line, you guys. I'm going to line this up on our center line. And then I'm going to take a clamp. All right, we look good there. We'll take another clamp. Everything's lined up just as it needs to be. I'm going to take our 0.9 pencil and I'm just going to trace out this template onto this fretboard. And I can cut this out on the bandsaw when we get ready to glue this onto the neck. I want to cut this fretboard out to within a millimeter, two millimeters of that line that we just made and start working on the radius a little bit on this fretboard before we actually glue it onto the neck blank. I like doing those two things separately just because it gives me as many opportunities as I can have. All right, you guys, to recap what we've done <clears throat> in this video, we've got the body perimeter sanded pretty much to where I want it. We need to keep these tabs intact until all the pickups are routed in, the string through ferrules are marked, we'll mark out our bridge mounting holes. Um, there's several different things that we need to do to this body before we cut those tabs off. We gotta figure out what we're gonna do about the cavity 
if I'm going to do it in the front of the guitar or if I'm going to do a rear cavity on this thing. Haven't decided that yet. We'll figure that out eventually. This body's ready to roll in its current form. I'm just going to wait until we get the neck heel cut so I can pop that in the body so we can use it to align our bridge with. We got the fretboard slotted. Crucially important that you get accurate fret slots. So I'm really happy that I was able to use the Maximum Guitar Works fret slotting template and the LMI fret slotting jig for this. We got the fretboard marked out on here with the template. What I'm planning on getting done in the next video is I just wanna get the neck cut out of the blank, get it run across the router table, get the fretboard cut out, run it across the router table, get our locator pins drilled in and get this fretboard glued up. That'll be the next video. I cannot wait to give one of you guys this guitar. The pickups are on the way. I just got notified this morning from Bill Taylor. You guys show Bill some love. Head over to Bill's Guitar Garage on YouTube. Check him out on Facebook, Sonoran Custom Wound Pickups. So I can't wait you guys come on back. And until the next video, peace and love.